we're sure you're tired of listening to presentations all day and you've been explained machine learning to more times than you've ever wanted to hear. So Esther and I are here to take you on a nice trip through worldview. Our first picture is that of the beautiful beach Navagio in Greece. Um, look how nice and refreshing the water looks, <laughs> so pretty. All right, next up we have some gorgeous giants. These are the Three Sisters Mountains in Banff National Park, stunning. Okay, cool, next. Now we have the Great Barrier Reefs. See, Australia has stuff other than just fires. <laughs> so beautiful, right? Some real bucket list type stuff. All right, moving on, we have some nice desert delicacies, um, except it kind of looks like someone took a pair of scissors and cut a chunk out of this image. Maybe, maybe that's a mistake. We can move on then to another cropped image. Esther, are we sure this is right? Let's try zooming out a little more, a little more. And what's wrong with Earth? These black splotches on Earth that you're currently seeing are actually called empty swaths. And these empty swaths are essentially regions of Earth that the worldview satellites have not been able to capture just due to the nature of satellite movement. And at first, they seem quite small and unimportant. Um, but if you ask any rambunctious five-year-old, they'll tell you small things are in fact important. And here's why. So imagine being a computer vision model that's learning physical landmarks based off the images I showed you before. When you saw the image of the refreshing Navajo beach, it was maybe the blue of the water, the grainy sand, et cetera, that might have defined this image as a beach for you. When looking at the Banff Mountains, it might have been the pointed tips of the mountains that defined this landmark for you. When we showed you the great coral reefs, it might have been the nice azure color that made you recognize these as reefs. However, when computer algorithms look at an empty swath image, AI models think that these empty swaths are the most interesting part of the picture. I mean, imagine these models thinking the most interesting part of this picture is the swath. Essentially, algorithms focus too much on these null areas and don't pay enough attention to the features of the background. So let's see an example of this. When we feed an algorithm a normal image of a beach, it returns other images that are similar to it, like we see here. All beaches. So now let's try again with another beach except this one is slightly different. <laughs> we feed the algorithm this image and here are our results. As you can see, we were given these horrendous results where none of the nearest neighbors are actually beaches. This is because the computer matched them based on swath features rather than the background images features. As you can probably guess, if our ultimate goal is to train an algorithm to recognize and assign images to their respective categories, this empty swathing can be a problem since the network would just pay attention to the swath. Essentially, we're saying that our goal is to hide these empty swaths under an invisibility cloak. We want to make them unnoticeable to fool the network, to fool the algorithm so that the network won't detect a pattern here, and then we'll simply ignore it. So how do we do this? Before we get into this, however, let's go through the world's fastest boot camp of CNNs at a very high level, except, you know, the intelligent kind. So convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, are composed of different layers of filters, as you can see here. These filters are kind of like coffee filters in the sense that they're trying to refine the coffee grounds or input image into something that makes more sense. I.e. coffee filters are trying to filter out actual coffee, whereas CNNs are trying to filter out what the image actually is. So each CNN filter acts sort of like an edge detector that detects vertical lines, horizontal lines, etc. Um, and these filters are actually called activation maps. For example, there could be 60 or 4 of them per layer. Um, and when the filter recognizes the patterns it's looking for, the filter will light up or activate. And then the image is passed to the next level. Layer by layer, the CNN eventually memorizes these patterns and learns to <coughs> associate them with certain image labels. That's kind of how CNN train. Let's now look at a more specific example of an activation map. And as you can see here, the image on the left is the original image, where the Im whereas the image on the right is one of its activation maps. Things get pretty tricky, however, when you start looking at empty swath images. Um, as you can clearly see here, the empty swath stands out extremely well in the activation map. I mean, who can blame them? These giant rectangles are by far the most notable image feature in the image. Um, it's like a black fly on top of a white head of hair. You just can't stop staring at it. Just aside though, the map is paying way too much attention to these swaths. So how do we solve this problem? By deactivating the swaths. 
let's find a way to use the evil of deception for good to fool the convolutional filters in order to prevent them from activating and essentially deep fake CNNs. In order to deep fake these algorithms and trick them into not seeing the empty swaths, our first idea was to fill the swaths with random RGB pixel values. We wanted the activation map to ignore this ugly swath area and pay attention to the background by filling the swath with the feature list pattern. However, as you can see from these images, even though the activation maps were focused less on the random RGB inside the swath, they were still very much focused on the edges. So we kept experimenting. The next failing strategy Esther and I decided to try was to try and get rid of these blatant borders. So what if instead of random RGB pixels, we took pixels from the image? This way, the colors of the filled in swath would match the scheme of the background image, making the swath have a lesser effect on the activation map. Great idea, right? Well, maybe I'm a little biased, but we thought that was a great idea. And here you can see the results. As you can see, there is in fact a lesser effect on the activation maps. Um, but of course, we still weren't satisfied. I mean, look at these borders. We don't like this at all. So how can we do even better? By making the chosen RGB value more powerful. This is our next filling strategy, the nearest pixel filling strategy. Essentially, it's a more dynamic version of the last strategy where each pixel of the swath is now filled with a random RGB value from a certain radius of the point you want to fill. And the radius decreases as you get closer to the edge of the swath, which is how we get this gradient look. And as you can see by the activation maps, there's a tremendous amount of improvement in lowering the effects the swaths have on these maps. And now let's look at some more images. Imagine if these images had empty swaths and how much of a pain would it have been to run um, the empty swath images through a CNN? Except rewind, they did have swaths, we just filled them with our nearest neighbor fill strategy. And even for the naked eye, it's hard to detect the location of some of these swaths and the effect that this algorithm would have on disguising the swaths for an AI model. Hey, actually, you don't have to imagine. We ran images with empty swaths versus images where the swath was filled with each of our different swath filling methods through an auto, auto encoder, thanks to Deepin Aaron. And here are some of the results. Let's first start with a baseline. We started with the original swathless image on the left and asked the auto encoder to match the most similar four images. As you can see, it did a pretty good job. But then came our problem. Here, we again started with an image and asked the algorithm to return back for nearest neighbors. However, as you can see here, the algorithm was focused way too much on the appearance of the swath and instead output images that to us are clearly not in the same category as the original force. The algorithm thought these images were similar due to the nature of the empty swaths rather than the similarities in the background images, which is what we're really looking for here. Now comes our filling strategies. Like Sarah said earlier, we started off by filling the empty swaths with Values. The results are a little bit better than the swath um, training data with the autoencoder correctly identifying one of the nearest neighbors. Next, we tried our second filling method, taking random RGB values from other parts of the image. And this was another step up from the previous method at autoencoder correctly identifying three of the image categories. And finally, let's look at our final method, filling the swath with nearest pixels. The results were amazing with four out of four neighbors being correct. Now let's zoom out again, so to speak, and put things into the bigger perspective of swath fillings applications and real machine learning. Um, so in supervised learning where images start off having labels, these empty swaths are not as big of a deal because with the supervised network, the algorithm already knows what patterns to look for in each image. For example, suppose we have a network classifying whether an image is a hurricane or not. Um, the training is supervised and the activation map already knows which hurricane patterns to look for and assigned onto new images. So swaths are less of a problem. However, in self-supervised learning, swath filling is incredibly valuable. Just for by way of analogy, imagine a toddler learning to speak and suppose they hear someone angrily shouting a swear word and having absolutely no idea what the word means. Um, the child might think it's important and begin repeating it. Since the training Im images don't have labels, the network has no metric of comparison or standard thing to look for, meaning it could pick on pick up on whatever feature is most prominent, which in this data set, it's the empty spots. So over the past eight weeks, we accomplished our goal of 
tossing this invisibility cloak over the empty spots, slots through the adaptive nearest pixel filling method. But our next step is now to use Shivam and Fernando's amazing data pipeline to do a more thorough and quantitative analysis of the data to add numbers and graphs to our observations as well, um, using real satellite data and benchmarks. So next time you see our faces, we'll have better numbers and graphs to show you too. So in conclusion, we've successfully fooled the neural networks into ignoring the swaths using deep fake, deep fake for good. Thank you so much. <laughs>